I would say I this session was a learning session for me as well. I as a person, um, I would I would say I was honored to actually to get introduced to you through this session, such a person like you, because from your um, I mean, I should I don't think if I should say this or not, but from your personality, from your speeches, I can safely say that I mean. You, you're such an elegant and an inspirational person. I cannot explain into words. It's an honor I, to good, me. good evening. Very good evening. Uh, anyway, would you kindly go ahead and introduce yourself for me? Uh, you are Miss Raisa. How do you yes. pronounce? Uh, okay, Raisa. Yes. Okay, first of all, very good evening to you. Uh, Raisa, I am uh, Kavaljit Kaur. And uh, I'm a working professional. I have been in teaching for so many years. At the moment, I am not directly into teaching. But the kind of job I do, I have to take care of the teaching also. So in a nutshell, I'm into administration at the moment. Okay, so what kind of um, administrative work have you been assigned? And I would like uh -huh. to really like to know that why you have decided to join English classes all of a sudden. Okay, uh, actually, though I have started taking the sessions uh, recently, but it hasn't happened, uh, uh, you can say, all of a sudden. It took me so many years of my life to gear up myself to come up to this final decision that this some lacuna is there so far as my communication is concerned so far as uh, speaking in english is concerned um you uh, can you repeat the question you asked me you talk you asked me about my administrative job also Yes, I asked yeah. you. I okay. asked you to elaborate a little bit. Okay, about okay. It. I'm working uh, into an institution of higher education. It is a college, and I am the head of the institution. So I have to look after the academics. I have to look after the discipline in the college, and then uh, I have to see whether the classes are being taken by the faculty members well on time. And uh, then holistic growth of the youth, you can say, I have to address the issues or the complaints of the parents. Then I have to revert back to the queries of the higher ups also. So this is the way the whole day goes on in the office. That must be a tough job for you, wouldn't it be? Yeah, definitely. Administration is always a tough job. Being on the other side of the table, like suppose if you are in the teaching, so you are simply concerned with your classes only. At the maximum, you will address the uh, problems of the youth or the students, especially related with the teaching only, most of the time. But once you come into administration, you have to see the faculty and you have to see the student and then the parents, then the higher ups. And overall, so definitely my job is very challenging and cumbersome. And why suddenly English classes? Because I am extremely um, intrigued to know about it since I can see that you are speaking extremely fluently. And it feels really good sometimes that, yes, people who are joining classes, some join classes to improve their communication skills, some to improve their public speaking skills. But majorly, I, as a person, get students who um, have a hard time to actually learn the language properly. So uh, this is a very diff this is going to be a very different session for me. I can feel like that. So I just wanted to know I'm very actually, curious. Uh, I was hesitant initially because uh, if somebody or you see me from a distance, you may also be among those who would say, what is the necessity to join these classes? You are already doing well and not so bad with the communication also. And Raisa, I live in Punjab and uh, re our regional language is Punjabi. Either we are at home or we are at a workplace. Once we are done with the paperwork, we are back to our regional language. So, so far as simple communication is concerned because I have come so far in my journey that uh, I may say, rather, not anybody would say, I know I'm very confident so far as communication is concerned, so far as communication in my language is concerned. 
though i can speak english well to the extent you may say which is whatever is needed so far as my professional jobs or responding to emails etc is concerned it's okay it's okay only okay but this is all my personal choice because i still feel because i know what the reality is what, what the lacuna is people might not have that much of you know uh, uh, they can't judge me to that extent A any person is the best judge you know uh, if if i have the lacuna i know where i make the mistakes and uh, what is missing when i converse with the people so first thing is that we don't find the environment to talk to somebody in english so whenever i get the chance we get i get the opportunity and it, i try to speak so most of the time like it happens with anybody who is on this journey that i always find myself short of the words it doesn't mean i don't have the words i have plethora of the words a uh, plethora of words but the thing is to use the correct word at the right time because i'm not tuned to that one thing is uh, this is the one of the reasons that why i am here and other as i told you it is all my personal choice because i always believe in growing growing up we grow throughout our life and i always try to grab the opportunities whatever kai come my way i am not a kind of person who feel that i have achieved this much and it is i'm done with it no i am a kind of person who would always take it like it's not so much is still undone so i that was in my mind that this lacuna of uh, uh, you know communicate to somebody in english this is hampering to some extent Uh, it's hampering my personality so this is a reason otherwise in my family my kids they are well versed with the language and they haven't given me any this kind of expression or this kind of feeling that mom you can't speak that well they know even i ask them about different words when they use because these are they are the children of amazon prime and netflix so number of times they use such a terminology in the words and i immediately start googling out and finding in the dictionary what is the meaning of this word so it's just for my growth i i am enjoying this journey raisa it's giving me happiness and with every passing day uh, i can feel the kind of difference i notice inside me and moreover like at this very moment i'm talking to you that we i'm giving myself these 15 20 minutes to practice my language so you're, this is you're my an time. source of inspiration for people who always think that doing one job and then doing a 9 to 5 job and then coming back home to your family to just sit and have a free time watch television go off to sleep this is the kind of lifestyle that we have arrived to and um, really i after listening to i feel like that yes personal growth is extremely important even at any age you are there's no age to learn definitely yes um so i think you know our topic of discussion for today which is smartphones and um i can already kind of anticipate the responses i'm going to get because there's a large generation gap between us but yet um <laughs> i would like to ask you that um you know this is a very generic question i would say but um uh, the kind of lifestyle that we have come to right now that people are always stuck to their phone screens whether it is in the public transport that they are traveling or maybe they are even in colleges like um i personally have witnessed and uh, been a victim of the same thing that when a college a lecture is going on uh students always occupy the back bench to check their mobiles be on their mobiles all the time this is something that i have witnessed so um i would like to ask you do you think that the kind of lifestyle that we have come to arrive to now it is just like some to some extent the invention of a smartphone is responsible for it the well, lack of creativity the is the biggest you can say or the the wonderful invention of the technology there is there is no doubt so far as uh, its positive side is concerned 
but raisa every technology comes up with its dark side also now the thing is it's all up to us it depends the kind of grooming we have or how much maturity we have attained so that is the ultimate factor which makes us uh, us to decide that uh, how much we are to use it and in what form we are to utilize that technology otherwise the smartphone is really is a blessing in today's scenario not for you people the young generation for the people of all ages everybody is utilizing it using it my mali uses it my housekeeper uses it my the person who comes to wash my garden is uses it all students use it right everybody in the family whether or even we we can't even figure out even a single person i feel in today's scenario who is not utilizing it or who doesn't know the uses of it but uh, again uh, of course there are always students sitting at the back bench and they are just uh, either they are busy in uploading their reels or uh, just watching some youtube videos which you know every kind of stuff because they are at the tender age there is nothing wrong with the invention with the smartphone not wrong with the age it is the because they are so they are passing through a phase of life which is very sensitive and so many changes they occur at this place uh, at this very phase of life hormonal changes are there and moreover from childhood they have just entered into the young youth phase where they are given a sort of independence and autonomy by the parents also parents also start giving them the importance making them a kind of feeling that they have now they are growing up and even uh, they play important role in the decision making in the families also so the moral of this whole story is that it is a blessing but again like suppose if i have small children in the family then it becomes my responsibility to tell them where to draw the line i won't say i i am not the kind of teacher or kind of mother who would say don't use it use it life is useless without it because smartphones have made our life very easy and effortless also i remember my days when i was uh, studying in the college or in the university and when we were to do some uh, surfing or to collect that some data i know from punjab to delhi i used to move there and then go to different uni- uh, libraries to fetch just a small part of or crunch of this chunk of the literature and how easier it has become now you just press a button and data and uh, everything is available and you see earlier we used to do the mail the other way now electronic mail it has made our life very easier from here i just type two lines and it is there and after three or four minutes the reply is back to me even students they use it for learning purposes and uh, there is no need to carry huge uh, you know n- number of books in the bag you can simply have the phone into your hands and you can do any surfing any topic so that way it has made our life very much easier it's all personal perspective the way you take it so otherwise i uh, in a nutshell it is a good thing smartphone is a good thing yeah i think uh, the thing which you mentioned at the last that students don't really need to carry a lot of books along with them and make their bags heavy um when they are carrying their uh, actually material study material to college which is something that i even use i carry my own laptop i do not really use any books um but of course there should be boundaries which should be drawn and there should be lines that should not be crossed when it comes to a uh, technological addiction i would say that yeah. is the word i would like definitely to use. it has be- there is no denial it has become an addiction but again you have to channelize your energy and your thought process you have to bring that change or it's a simply game of mindset so uh, would you say that um from you you have seen a, a you know um how should i put this that um you've kind of seen from generation to generation how this ev- evolution of the smartphone has turned out to be so would you say that it, it is more advantageous and disadvantageous for our uh, generation i and the right coming i already you know made up the conclusion it is definitely beneficial not for you the youngsters or the students for me also it has made my life much easier 
right so if you if uh, i go uh, back to memory lane earlier there were those button phones etc et but with the emergence of smartphones life has become easier it has become effortless though parallel to it so many people they get indulged into mischievous activities and uh, the anti social elements they use it for wrong purposes so thing is we must use it but we must use the brain also while we use it we shouldn't get indulged you know whenever we are doing some surfing so many sites automatically get popped up so before clicking those sites we must give a thought and so actually the teachers must guide the students parents must give the guidance to the their to their kids kids I, th i think this is the important thing and the people who are mature of they must see the dark side of it also what is going if i do this thing what is going to be the repercussion of it what how it is going to impact me or my family in the long run i think we all are aware of it we of course people at all ages become vulnerable and especially the youth because they get lured by so many like making money in a short in playing different games or in a short a small short kind of things they get lured but uh, it doesn't mean that uh, we we can conclude that it is not a good thing yeah it is a good thing but with the, the dark side also we should be remain cautious and conscious about it so it's not all black and white it's gray as we say definitely definitely yeah. it is there uh, so i have typed out a few things in the chat box since uh, while you were actually um saying everything i was simultaneously typing in the chat box so that i could quickly catch up with uh whatever you were saying and how you could uh frame your answers in a much better way in a much impressive way so i would kindly ask you to look at the chat box and see um okay. you uh you were actually um you were you weren't able to find the right word for um the keypad mobile phone actually you said uh, button mobile phone so that's the keypad mobile phone and one more thing was the anti social or um illegal crimes that are on the rise on the internet that is actually called cyber crimes um yeah cyber crimes yeah. uh so one thing that i would um like to say is that i have seen from the perspective of my university and my college um that we always emphasize and stress on how important cyber security is how important cyber security education is so um have you ever had the opportunity to actually raise this issue in your own institution about cyber security uh, this issue is being raised in all the institutions it has become mandatory also at the administrative end so on and off we keep on having these kind of sessions by calling the experts from outside even the people from the cyber crime branches also so they used to come and we used to arrange these kinds of seminars and uh, discussions uh, at the college end even even in the small in the schools uh, with the students or the kids who are studying in the uh, smaller classes or the, these kinds of programs are also being held uh, in the schools also it's very common now because yeah, cyber crime has come up to uh, you know what should i say it it has become something normal in today's scenario every second person would come up whether uh, he has been caught up by some scam or because we do banking online we do uh, purchasing online so these kinds of things happen with every third fourth person that i purchased this thing and or i deposited the money and that i didn't receive so that's why we educate everybody around us whenever you do like expose if i do the purchasing always do such thing from the authentic websites similarly if any kind of message is uh, is getting popped up is popped popped up don't always uh, click uh, that message or don't give the authentication or your consent uh, until you are quite aware of that so this thing is already has become a part of our day to day education now i think more than um i would say more than the youngsters there are uh, people from 
the older generation who need to be actually educated about cyber crimes because mostly they are the ones who are targeted for these kind of cyber crimes as you said the scams and the thefts they are majorly either targeted at youngsters like us maybe or maybe at the older generations who have uh, who are thinking of investing into something or maybe um, saving up or is- issues like that i think for us yeah. it applies as well as you know, as well as um, people who are younger than our generation uh, they also need to be educated on cyber security issues so my last question of the day for you and this is that um, how do you use your smartphone or your devices i would say your uh, electronic devices as a form of entertainment for yourself of course at the end of the day we all need some kind of entertainment right actually i simply use it in the morning when i am out for my workout at that time i just uh, you know i enjoy my music when i am working out otherwise in the whole day i remain so busy that uh, i don't i'm not left with any time where i can just uh, a think of uh, just watching some movie on the youtube because these days i'm totally focused on my language i do listen to motivational speakers you can't say it as entertainment but because i'm enjoying it you may take it anyway i listen to motivational speakers on my smartphone then i have started uploading these videos also uh just to uh, inspire other others who are on this journey of learning english that uh, age is just a number and it hardly matters at whatever stage of life you are and then i share my these videos among my students also without any hesitation being the head of the institution i don't hesitate that i make mistakes because making mistakes is a good thing it is a sign that you are doing something good you have started some new journey so i present myself as i am before my students by sharing my these videos with them so that way i'm utilizing my smartphone this way these days yeah during covid days i watched so many uh, old movies because i still love the movies of 60s and 70s which my mom used to watch that was the time of my mom actually but i still love that era the music of that era but these days i'm totally focused on uh, this stuff only or for email purposes also i mean you're such a source of an inspiration that you do are not at all afraid of making mistakes even as the head of an institution that is extremely so good i mean i don't have words to describe how i'm feeling right now but um, after that you mentioned one more thing is that you like movies from the eras of the 60s and the 70s i am someone who actually uh, listens and watches those kind of movies rather than the movies that have come out these days because i completely don't get the use of films that have come out today they're just for the source of entertainment and not educational purposes yeah. yes but right. um yeah and uh, but there are some movies that do teach us do educate us um uh, but other than that it's just a sole purpose of entertainment and no more like i have read i have um, actually had the opportunity to go through the natya shastra which is um, one of the texts which we had in the first semester and it was i was so mesmerized Sorry, by it uh, i i'm interrupting you just tell me because the session is about to be over in a short while just let yeah. me know something about you raisa what do you me? do <laughs> i am currently pursuing my bachelor's in english literature and um, I am living in Delhi but I'm originally from West Bengal from Calcutta. Okay. So yeah I mean uh, the architecture the kind of colonial architecture that is still prevalent in Calcutta the kind of art and uh, culture and heritage that we still have that we try to preserve is what inspired me to take up English literature otherwise I would have been a normal in a herd of horse and not a unicorn taking up engineering or neat as my career i fought a lot with my parents and then i got into this field yes nice you must always chase your passion or your interest i mean i was the time when for that in my family yeah then i chased after my dreams nice 
ours was a time when we were forced if somebody is intelligent it means the child would go for either first preference child science second engineering uh, and third commerce and fourth one would be the humanities or the arts that But, is also uh, now, this way, law or upsc if you go into the humanities field you're either doing law or upsc which is yeah. absolutely not true yeah right coming from a humanities background i can safely say that there is there are maybe 30 to 35% who go up to take upsc or law others always follow their passion or uh, do phd or maybe masters in a subject which they actually love which i would like to do i am neither interested in law nor in upsc so i would say that yes i can i am following my dream and my passion <laughs> Night. Nice. Be very honest. So you are that way a lucky person that you are chasing your dreams. Yes, Good. I am. Your passion. Uh, before we end this session, I always ask this question to my students, and that is, what did you take away from today's session? What did you learn from today's session? Opportunity to talk to you, to hone my speaking skills, and the other thing, the hidden agenda of my these kinds of sessions is, I always love to know about the person. who are strangers who were strangers to me just a couple of minutes back i love to know about them also so i enjoy that i really want to know what kind of people are there on the other side of the camera in the other world well i would say i this session was a learning session for me as well i as a person um i would i would say i was honored to actually to get introduced to you through this session such a person like you because from your um i mean i should i don't think if i should say this or not but from your personality from your speeches i can safely say that i mean you you're such an elegant and an inspirational person i cannot explain in two words it's an honor like to be a student like yeah it's for a student like me who is growing up who is um going to step into the adult world soon Uh, I've already stepped into it, but still, when I graduate from college, the real adult world starts. And I have been noticing my professors around me, my own principal around me, and it's the time for me to actually choose my role models carefully. I can, I can really say that I was absolutely so mesmerized and so amazed by this session today. It was a learning session for me as well. Thank you, dear. Thank you. I'm honored. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining today. Thank you so much. Have Thank a good you. day. Thank you. You too have a good day. God bless you. Thank you.